Hi, this video is going to talk to you about Dubsado workflows and how to automate things with your business in Dubsado. It is game changer. I'm very excited about this and Dubsado is the number one platform for um, automated workflows of all the ones that I've tried. So let's dive in. Hi everyone, I'm Lainey. I'm a wedding invitation designer and I also love exploring different client management systems to compare and contrast them for you. I have a whole playlist here on my channel and I also have a 30% off code for Dubsado because I'm a certified Dubsado specialist. So if you do decide to try it out, make sure you use that code, which is designed by Lainey or the link that's in this, the description of this video um, in order to get 30% off your first month or year. So today we're talking about workflows, which is one of my favorite features in Dubsado. You're going to need to go over to this templates tab and click workflow. Got to move my face out of the way for that one. All right. So workflows are basically fully automating. We've talked about how you can create forms in Dubsado. You can create templates. You can do custom canned emails. Um, you can use smart fields and custom map fields. I have videos on all of this. So this is basically the advanced thing when you put it all together and you take it all off your plate completely. So I'm going to go ahead and pretend we're adding our first workflow. So I'll click add workflow, let's say test workflow. And then next step, you can add a payment plan to it. We're not going to do that right now. I'm just going to go ahead and add an action. So the coolest thing about Dubs Auto compared to any other platform is they just have so many different actions and so many different triggers. There are other uh, products out there that do have some automation capabilities. HoneyBook does, Hello Bonsai does, 17 Hats does, but none of them have this amount of triggers as well as this amount of actions. So the things that you can do, you can change the status, which is where um, you can basically uh, filter out your projects from like design to proofs approved to wherever you are in the status of your project, add tags, send emails, forms, um, create a to-do for you or your team, send a contract, an invoice, create an invoice, activate and deactivate the portal. I have a whole video on the Dubsado portal that I'm going to be uploading soon. Um, you can pause the workflow. I think this is where it gets really, really cool is pausing the workflow until um, you're able to go in and check something. You're able to go in and start it over. So this is where if you have some things that you don't feel comfortable uh putting out automatically that you need to check over and make sure they're good before they go out, pause the workflow or hold actions until. So this is where if a form can't be sent until the client has already seen something else or signed a contract or something like that, you can always hold the actions until, wait for them to respond, wait for you to create a list or check it off or do something else. So we'll show you all the different triggers. And then send appointment schedule, start a workflow. So you can use a workflow to start a different workflow and you can archive the project at the end. So even if you just use a workflow to like archive all your old projects, it's still the best. Um, one thing that we're waiting on here is conditional logic. It's something that's on the roadmap, but not currently um, in direct development. They don't have a date for it or anything. And that would be like, if the client chooses this option, start this workflow. And if the client chooses this option, start another workflow. So we, we don't really have that yet, but I'll go ahead with like send form. And there's so many options here for the trigger. So you can do relative, which is basically going to be um, after workflow started, before the project start date in relation to another date. So I always put my projects in as my client's wedding date. Um, so you could do you know, six weeks after that, ask them for pictures and reviews. Um, you can go before that date. If you want to put in your clients as like, if you're a wedding stationer like me, you could do it as the due date of the wedding invitations. And so then it would be easier to calculate how many days or weeks before that you want to commit certain actions. Um, it just depends on kind of how you want to set that up and how you want to calculate that. You can wait till a form is completed or an invoice or contract. Um, all previous actions is just everything else in the workflow, they can schedule appointments through these. And after an appointment has ended, I love that one because they can basically schedule an appointment. And then whenever that appointment time ends, um, it'll automatically send them like a follow up email, a form, whatever it is. And then I also love this after form is not completed. <laughs> so if it's three days and your form hasn't been completed yet, you can send them a reminder email. So I think that's really fun. Let's go with, um, we're going to send a form after the contract is signed. So that'll be like my invitation, invitation, 
my invitation information questionnaire. So we'll go ahead and have them send that over. Um, we'll do the day after the contract is signed. You can choose here um, if you wanna require approval, which I love that. And then you can also choose to apply it to the portal, apply it to the project, not to the portal or send the email. So that's just a form on the back end. That's if you just wanna get a form in there, but you don't want the client to see it yet. Um, applying it to the portal is if the client's using the portal, you can go ahead and do that, or you can also do it through an email. I like to do this particular one through an email, so we'll go with that. You can choose any form template. I don't have my questionnaires in this demo account, so I'll just uh, send a sample intake questionnaire. And then you can uh, select whatever email. The only thing is you need to make sure the email that you send includes this form link variable or else it won't work. So it's already automatically in there. If you select a canned response that you've typed otherwise, like if we do this one, then we're gonna have to add this form link uh, variable in here. So maybe instead of there, we do form form link and that's the link to the form. And we say, you know, whatever we want to say this is already a canned email that's in here so we wanted to type our own email we could just type it in here and just a few things that i want to note about devs auto that are really cool so we're going to have to make sure we add this form link i'll go ahead and do it so we know that it's in there you can use these smart fields so where these little brackets are this is going to put your brand template email signature in there. So whatever you have set as your email signature, it'll automatically pull into there. And then you can also use all these other smart fields. So like the client smart fields, you can put their first name and it will automatically pull whatever the first name is. So you're basically taking all the customization out of here, but still the client is going to have the customization that makes them feel unique, makes it feel like you typed this, makes it feel like it's important to you um, and that you're really spending time on this project, but you actually aren't spending any time on this. This is all gonna be 100% automated. So I'll go ahead and just say like, thanks for signing the contract. Here's the form. <laughs> it's not what I would necessarily say to them, but once you send this over, um, it's gonna send the form at the form link, it's gonna fill in their name, it's gonna fill in my signature, and it's gonna be good to go. And we have that, so one day after the contract is signed, which is great. I think if it's automatic and you want it to look customized, um, don't do it like one minute after the contract is signed, do it the next day so that it feels like you might have actually typed it. I have one more action here before I show you how to apply it to the job. So I will do change the project status after the form is completed. And we'll do it immediately because this is happening on the back end. So the only form to watch is the only one we've already added to this workflow. And we will move it to project status design. So this basically means once they fill out their information questionnaire, their project moves from onboarding and booking to the design status, and it will be in the design status with all the other projects that are in there right now. Okay, so if we go into a project, we'll of course go to the workflows tab. And then we will just choose test workflow and it will apply automatically to the project. It's going to show us all the different actions that we have in that workflow. And what we can do is edit them or remove them that will apply only to this project. If you edit these things, it will not affect the template. Um, so if you find something within a project that you wanna change, make sure you change in the template too if you want it to change for all the future projects. However, you also have the option to mark something completed if it's already been done so it doesn't happen or force something now, which basically just says do this action. Right now, you can add actions here if you need to add that for a specific person um, and you can view where they're at in the workflow and it'll kind of give you this like completed in process, failed, deleted, etc. Um, I don't use like massive workflows, but some people do that have like 25 steps. Um, so that might be helpful to them. You can have multiple workflows um, on the same project, but some of the triggers can get confusing. So you'll have to just have special eyes on that and make sure you test them on a test project. I highly recommend testing on a test project uh, with any workflows anyway. You're not gonna be able to do that with your own email because a lot of your forms will come through as the owner, not the client. So you'll wanna do that with you know your spouse, your friend someone else you know or a fake email um, that you have maybe your personal email lastly i just want to show you when you're editing a workflow back in that template section um, if i were to change this so if i were to um, change this to send two days after then there have been some differences and so i can choose to update the project workflows which will change 
any projects that have this workflow attached, it will update them from one day to two days. If the action has already taken place, it won't update anything. Um, but if the action has not taken place, then it will go ahead and update. And then when we head back into our sample job workflow, it now has updated to two days after the client has signed the contract. And so some of these things, you can go ahead and start with the contract signed. Um, that's something that client is going to do anyway after you send the invoice, but you can start your workflow as soon as um, the proposal and invoicing stages to go ahead and get them started. So you can send, you can use this, I really like it for an onboarding thing, welcome to the family, here are some resources that might be helpful to you, um, sending any questionnaires or forms, anything after they filled out uh, feedback, you can have it send an email that says, hey, I'm, I got your feedback, I'll respond within two to three days, um, however long it takes you. So you can really customize this uh, so much. I also love using it for like asking for reviews a certain amount of time after the job is over. Um, if you're not sure, you know, maybe you want to check and make sure they have like positive feedback before you ask for the reviews. So you could set it as, um, you know, remind me to check in on this and it will not send that email until you approve it sending that email. Now, if you want to make sure that workflows are defaulting on all your jobs and you don't have to add them in manually, what you can do is add it in a lead capture. So you go to the lead capture form, which is where the client is going to fill in all their contact information and become a project in the for the first place in Dubsado. I have a whole video on that if you want. And then you can just apply a default workflow. You can also use a different workflow for different lead capture forms. So if you have one on your consulting page and then one on your photography page, um, you could do a different workflow for both of those forms because you have different workflows for those types of projects. So I can go ahead and click test workflow and that will go ahead and initiate that workflow already on that job. So then once the contract is signed, two days later, it'll send that form and it'll keep doing any of those actions that we put in the workflow. So I'd love to answer any questions you have about this. This is one of the more advanced Dubsado features. And I think once you get into it, you'll start to see even more granular things that you can do with it. But start really simple. Start with just, hey, welcome to the family after the contract is signed. Here's a few blog links that are helpful to you or things to look forward to in the future. Um, just try out something simple and see how it goes. It's going to take so much time off your plate. If you do decide to try Dubsado for the first time, uh, make sure you use my link or my code designed by Lainey to get our exclusive 30% discount on your first month or year with Dubsado and check out our full CMS playlist while you're here to see other features of Dubsado as well as comparisons with some other platforms.